What time is it, Alex? It's six oh nine. Where are you going? Um, to the fish hatchery again. What do you call a fish wearing a bow tie? Um, um, I don't know. Tell me. Sophisticated. Sophisticated. <laughs>
at another hatchery in Byron, Oklahoma. Hybrid striped bass are crossed between striper bass and white bass. They are prized for being good fighting fish and a wonderful taste. Hatcheries are involved with hybrid striped bass for two reasons. One, like all the other fish species they raise, the hatchery gives them added protection during a critical growing phase. And two, pure hybrids are functionally sterile, so hybrids have to be manually spawned. The Byron Hatchery actually harvests the eggs from the female striped bass and fertilizes them with the male white bass. Controlled fertilization and incubation gives a very high rate of successful hatching. Hatchlings are also called fry. Within a day or two after hatching, the fry are transported to Holdenville in large square bottom plastic bags. The water looks like it is filled with salt and pepper because the hatchlings are so small. Carefully handled in transport and with special precautions taken when released, the hatchlings are let go in a pond like this one and a half acre pond that you see here. This is the pond we harvested from. The water level is already lowered because the draining process was already underway. You can't drain the pond too fast for reasons we will explain shortly. But before we talk about harvesting, let's talk about the fish's time here and the rest of the hatchery. Located behind the dam at Holdenville Lake, this hatchery has 39 ponds. Most are one acre ponds and the total surface area is 43 and a half acres. The active part of the pond is the top 18 inches, so deeper ponds do not increase capacity. Surface acres dictate capacity. They raise several species of fish, including walleye, channel catfish, sawgye, bluegill, Florida bass, northern bass, and the hybrid striped bass we are moving today. The fish from here and the other three state hatcheries are used to stock lakes and ponds across the state of Oklahoma. Each year, the Holdenville hatchery raises about 7 million fish. This particular pond, being harvested today, was stocked with 180,000 hybrid fry. At this stage, the fish feed on zooplankton. The water quality is monitored to ensure favorable growing conditions. As they get older, they get a supplemental high protein feed. Normally it takes about five weeks to raise them up to a target size of one and a half inch fingerlings. If the fish are left in past this size, cannibalization starts to occur. That means the bigger fingerlings will start to eat the smaller ones. Once this start, the population will dwindle significantly every week. Because of the long, cool spring this year, it took an extra three weeks. One thing we learned on our visit is good management requires flexibility as you get a lot of curveballs. Now, even though the fish are much more protected in the hatchery ponds than in an open lake, there are still threats to their survival. Some predators, such as turtles, crawdads, frogs, and snakes find their ways to the ponds. And even though water quality is managed, fry are fragile and can expire easily. If you've ever kept an aquarium of guppies, or especially baby guppies, you know the challenges of keeping them all healthy. Now imagine trying to do that with 180,000 of them in a large outdoor pond where you can't control the weather or stop the predators from getting in. Quite a challenge, right? In a typical lake, the survival rate from the fry stage to the fingerling stage is only around 10%. In a protected hatchery, the national average survival is around 34%. The Holdenville hatchery survival typically ranges from 45 to 50%, putting them well above average performance. That's a lot of information, but believe it or not, it's just the basics of a much more involved process. Said simply, the hatchery takes in teeny tiny fraggle fish and protects them while they grow bigger and harder. 
disposed in life increases the number of fish that grow big. Now that we know more about the fish hatchery, let's harvest some fish. The pond has a gate that can be opened to let out water. For the first two days of draining, a screen covers the outlet that lets the water out, but not the fish. If the water is let out too fast, the fish get sucked against the screen and can't swim away. That wouldn't be good. On the morning of the harvest, when the water level is low enough, water is directed into a concrete catch basin. A second screen is put into the outlet of the basin, and then the upstream screen is removed. This allows the fish to begin moving out of the pond with the water and collecting into the catch basin. It's like a water slide ride. Along with the fish, other critters join the ride: tadpoles, turtles. Crawl dads, even sometimes snakes. Workers keep the screen clean. They also clear the basin of any animals that don't belong. Supplemental water from the lake is added to the flow going through the basin. Workers keep an eye on the water level, making sure that the flow coming in the basin. Is not too fast and not too slow. It takes a few hours to move all the fish from the pond down to the catch basin. These fish are headed to three different homes on two trucks before the loading begins. The water in the truck tanks is checked to make sure it matches the conditions of the water the fish are in, and they don't want to shock the fish by giving them a sudden change in conditions, like a temperature change. When there are enough fish in the basin to load the truck, the fish are pushed toward one end of the basin. Two workers slowly walk a screen partition, shrinking down the basin area the fish are in. This will make scooping them with a net. A lot easier. The first truck being loaded is for a research program at Thunderbird Lake near Norman, Oklahoma. To track these fish, the water in the transportation tank is treated with a non-toxic chemical that will dye the fish's ear bone, called the otolith. These ear bones are pretty cool because they can be used to tell an age of a fish. Every year. They grow a new layer, so counting the layers tells you the age of the fish. It's like growth rings on a tree. The in future fish studies at Thunderbird, biologists will be able to tell which fish came from this stocking of thirty thousand fish because of the special marking. Pretty cool, right? Nobody wants to try and count thirty thousand fish, so the staff uses a powerful tool to help make the job easier. Once again, math is here to help. Workers use a scale to weigh out one tenth of a pound of fish. Then they count just the fish in that sample. They do this three times and take the average. In this case, the average was sixty-seven fish for every tenth of a pound. That means every pound of fish is six hundred and seventy fish. Now all they have to do is weigh the fish as they load them into the transport tanks, and they have a great approximation of the total number of fish. In the case of the first load, they want thirty thousand fish, so thirty thousand fish divided by six hundred and seventy fish per pound gives us about forty-five pounds of fish. Once loaded up, the biologist. Takes this load of fish and regularly monitors them until it's time for their release later in the day. This tracking program will help guide future management practices. Fish continue to move down to the basin, and the flow monitoring and non-fish critter removal continues. 
as the flow from the pond slows, the makeup water flow is increased to keep a good level in the basin. Once all the fish are moved down, the second truck is loaded. The weighing of the fish continues so that we know how many fish were raised and how many will be on the truck. This truck ended up with 65,000 fish. Combined with the 30,000 fish on the first truck, that's a total of 95,000 fish. That's a survival rate of over 52%. That is well over the national average of 34%. 34,000 fish more. Now that the fish are on the truck, let's get a better look at their ride. The tank holds 550 gallons of water. It is divided into two separate sections, which gives more options for delivering fish. In our case, Almost all the fish are going to one lake, so the two tanks will be loaded pretty evenly. The truck is equipped with oxygen tanks, regulators, flow meters, aeration vents, and blowdown devices. These all work together to keep the water well oxygenated and prevent the buildup of undesirable gases in the airspace of the tanks. These fish are riding in style. Haha. <laughs> Throughout transport, the conditions of the tank are monitored every hour to make sure things are ideal for the fish. Adjustments are made if needed. From here, they are, there are two stops. The first stop is at a smaller municipal lake in Dell City, Oklahoma, named Eagle Lake. This lake is part of the Oklahoma Wildlife Department's Close to Home program, which focuses on providing urban fishing spots and youth accessibility. To add to the variety of the fish in this lake and to test how hybrids will do, it is being stocked with 700 fish. With this small amount, the fish are caught in a net and released in the lake water at the shore. The staff member uses his knowledge of the fish and scouting the lake to pick the best spot. In this case, he picks the shade of a tree. The fish are released and observed to make sure it was successful. The next and final stop is Call Lake on the Arkansas River in north central Oklahoma. And it is it is the tenth largest lake in Oklahoma. The rest of the fish, about sixty four thousand, will be stocked here at a spot spot called Washanga Bay. The water temperature at the shoreline is checked and it's several degrees warmer than in the tanks. So a staff member backs his truck as far down the boat ramp as he can so that a discharge hose can reach the cooler water. As an added precaution, lake water is bucketed into the truck right. to temper the step? tank water and allow the fish to acclimate more slowly. Now it's time to let the fish go into their new home, one tank at a time. A slide gate is opened and the water and fish come rushing out. A specially designed outlet, plus the angle of the truck bed, does a great job of sweeping all the fish out. But another bucket full of water is flushed through just in case a fish got stuck in the tube. The surface is observed for any signs of significant mortality loss or stress behaviors, such as fish coming to the surface for air. That's called piping. Yeah, it's called piping. After we make sure the first release was successful, we release the second tank.
Good record keeping is important. So the staff member records all of the key measurements and the notes about the release. When he gets back to the office, he will file a report so that everyone involved with the management of Call Lake will have that information. The next time I see some of these fish, I hope it will be at the end of my fishing line. Yay! When I do catch a fish, I'll be grateful for the men and the women of the wildlife department for all of their hard work. I hope you showed them some appreciation too.